Maine's North Woods, more than 10 million acres, are a haven for wildlife and outdoor recreation. This is the largest undeveloped forest east of the Mississippi River, and for two centuries it's also supported a commercial logging industry. Now there's a push to get climate mitigation added to that resume and to support landowners who undertake climate-friendly forest practices. As you thin the forest, as you remove the lower quality material, you're actually improving the growing conditions. So having markets for low quality wood is really critical. With more than 800,000 acres, Seven Islands is one of the largest landowners in Maine. And for decades, the family-owned company has been independently certified in sustainable forestry, a management strategy that considers biodiversity, water, soil, and other factors before deciding which trees should be cut and which should be left to grow. And that's where the practice of pre-commercial thinning comes in. It's similar in concept to weeding a garden. So you grow trees larger, faster, and in essence, you're also storing more carbon in those trees as a result. Through photosynthesis, trees remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it in their trunks at different rates, depending on the average age and number of trees in a stand but they also release it when they're cut down, decay, or are burned. Allowing them to get bigger and older before they're harvested is considered climate smart. And this is where carbon can be a game changer. Neff's research, currently being peer reviewed, suggests that if climate smart forestry is combined with forest conservation and the expanded use of wood products to replace fossil fuel dependent steel, concrete, and plastic, New England could reap the rewards. Our analysis shows that the amount of carbon that the forest could remove within the next 25 or 30 years amounts to about 30 percent of the total emissions reductions that we need in New England. But Dr. William Muma, a climate scientist, is skeptical that such carbon savings can be achieved so quickly in a forest that is continually harvested. I don't see uh, how this how this beats the, the the climate goals that have been set, for example, by the uh, uh, the recent uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change report, which which basically says we need to actually set aside thirty to fifty percent of our lands, waters, and oceans uh, in order to have a functioning uh, global climate system. And in the wood products industry, there's also concern about promising too much. Patrick Strauch of the Maine Forest Products Council says the Maine woods are already offsetting about 60 percent of petroleum emissions, with another 15 percent of carbon stored in wood products. I want to make sure we don't have unrealistic expectations about how much more we need to contribute um, to that effort. Alec Giffen of NEF says improved forest management and expanded markets for wood products must both be considered part of any climate solution. The challenge for landowners is that climate smart forestry requires additional investment up front, and the payoff takes a while. Finding ways to help landowners put that investment back into the ground is really critical. NEF will have the chance to demonstrate how that can be done. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recently awarded the organization and more than 20 large landowners and other partners a $30 million grant for a pilot project on 100,000 acres. Dr. Muma says he'll be watching to see the results. Until then, he and Alec Giffen do agree on one key point, that it may be time to compensate forest landowners not only for the wood products they produce, but for the recreational, ecological, and carbon storage benefits they provide.